there, folks. Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. We got mail. Santee, can you do a video about badges in the Old West? About six of you. Badges. Badges. No, do not do that. We've done it like three times this year. Stop with the clip. We ain't got no badges. No, seriously, don't, don't. We don't need no badges. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't have to show you any stinking badges. Roll of film. So, badges weren't always related to the law. Early ones in history were ways to classify a person's status or allegiance. They were adopted by military and eventually law enforcement and emergency services as a way to identify them to the public. Wearing a badge over the heart is a symbol of the pledge the wearer took to serve, but there's no evidence that every lawman in the Old West wore it on the left side. In this famous photo of Henry Newton Brown, it appears he's wearing it on the right side. If it was a tintype, it would be a reversed image, but men's jackets have buttons on the right side. Incidentally, Henry rode that outlaw lawman fence, and it eventually got him shot. In the 1880s, Marshal Moses M. Drew set instructions for the proper etiquette in wearing the badge specifically for the U.S. Marshals. Each deputy will wear his badge of office outside on the left lapel of his coat during the time he shall be on duty. Probably the most iconic Old West badge comes to us from the Texas Rangers. During the early days of the Republic of Texas, the Rangers didn't wear badges or even any kind of uniform. Blending in was their plan, which was just fine since there didn't seem to be much money for the force to begin with. Nice, eh? They pay you off in peanuts. Gotta get out of here alive, I'm finished. In 1836, the Great Seal of Texas was created with a five-point star. This is just stupid. This could be the impetus for the badge associated with these legendary law dogs. So, eventually the Texas Rangers set about making their own badges to distinguish themselves from the other citizens in the event of situations where a lawman was necessary. If you've heard that they were made from Mexican coins, you're right, some of them were. This one from the 1880s is authenticated as having been worn by Ranger Ira Ayton. It resides at the Texas Ranger Museum in Waco, Texas. As for the rest of the Wild West, it's rather difficult to pin down exact dates for some of the existing badges. It seems the badge was not as much a priority as Hollywood would have us believe. What a shock, right? Uh. Other than coins, plating was done on other metals. It's said the term tin star came about by smaller towns using can lids for badges. I can't validate that statement since I've never seen a tin can badge yet. <laughs> badge types and shapes varied depending on available resources, not so much class of lawman. Stars, shields, crescents, ovals, you name it. Well, maybe not a rhombus. At least I haven't found one. Some indecisive person even came up with a suspension badge, which is one style connected to another style with metal rings. Honestly, I have no idea how they came about, but it looks really cool. Arizona Red made one of these for his Sheriff Pete Gabriel impression. As time went on, you saw more badges on Frontier Peacekeepers. It became a serious status symbol, as it is today. Wearing a badge carries great honor and deserves a lot of respect. Speaking of today, many companies make reproduction badges. Some are actually stamped from molds made from the originals. You can even get custom badges made. If you're interested, just use that Google thing and find the one that fits your persona. Well, folks, that's the episode on badges. So, please, like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail. Amigo, you got the wrong idea. We don't want to get you gone for nothing. Don't listen to him. <laughs>